Uh, so Mark, welcome. Uh, please introduce yourself a bit more if I've missed important things um, and, uh, and your project. Yeah, thanks very much, Nick. Um, and uh, this is a, a complete change from the more technical side that uh, Sophie's very expertly uh, presented there, um, even if there's a sense of uh, her being a bit distanced from a research domain, because I'm a sort of meat and potatoes researcher. I'm a historian, um, a criminologist, and professor of history at Griffith University. Uh, for the last five years, I've been directing this project called the Prosecution Project, which is a history of the criminal trial in Australia. Uh, and what's unique about it is that we're building a database of, as far as we can get them, all uh, criminal prosecutions in Australian criminal jurisdictions, which are mainly the states, the six states and the Northern Territory, uh, over very long periods of time. So we have records dating from 1788 through to the 1960s. Um, this has been a, a digital project that um, has relied on, on partnerships with archives that provide the data. So our typical data is uh, from original court registers and uh, we extract that data, transcribe it, uh, because it's mostly manual data, so there was no way of accessing the data by machine technologies at the moment. Uh, so we've had to organise transcription using a research and a volunteer community um, into a database that we uh, built with e-research services at Griffith University. And um, on this topic today, we probably really should have somebody from uh, our e-research team here to talk about some of the issues that are likely to be of most interest to this group. But um, yeah, I mean, you've indicated uh, an interest in this new type of uh, research. So I might just introduce a little bit um, about it and, and show you some of the tools we have. And, and particularly the issue around um, what we do with the data once we get it. Um, because uh, let me say there are two types of users of this kind of data. Um, there are researchers like ourselves who may be interested in telling individual stories or looking at, um, in kind of conventional social sciences terms, looking at aggregated data and analysing that in terms of what are the factors that shape how uh, a criminal uh, trial develops and what its outcomes are. Um, so at the individual level, we also have very large community of um, people involved in family history and genealogy and so on that also um, access our database. And those sort of users are really interested in individual um, uh, stories and really in descriptions of um, events and individuals as they were recorded originally um, and not reclassified into some sort of higher aggregate. But for the purpose of um, uh, thinking about patterns of, of the events and um, we're talking about, then the visualisation uh, of our data is, is becoming quite important. Um, and it's at that point that we have to think about how we uh, aggregate into meaningful categories that respect historical uh, forms, uh, but also make sense in terms of the social science possibilities of analysis. Um, so um, this uh, public search page, I think you can all see that here, uh, that, that just uh, outlines the, the purposes of the project. And so we have um, uh, search historical trials here, which has got a basic uh, keywords search, which uh, works across a select number of attributes of our data um, and, and simply searches in a, an uncontrolled way for any term arising that somebody might uh, uh, choose um, uh, to investigate. So somebody coming in might want to know about a particular individual and uh, they type that in or they may want to uh, know about um, a particular offence and without having to go into more advanced search they may wish to see whether we've got anything on 
uh, forgery and uh, there's plenty of stuff there for them to look at. But if they've got um, more information about the area in which they uh, want to search, then uh, they are able to search across a number of our attributes. Now, this is the select number of attributes um, for a specified period of time, which is constrained by archive access conditions. Uh, uh, some of our records are from closed periods or, or under restricted access of other kinds, such as children's court material. Uh, but for the, um, most of the records we have, uh, people can search across this uh, range of attributes and uh, we're in the process at the moment as we're getting to a more complete data set of uh, starting to consider releasing a bit more of our data. Um, so how, how do we uh, derive these things? I think um, in terms of uh, uh, any kind of application principles of classification, then, you know, the original data um, challenges uh, just at the transcription level of getting accurate uh, terminology off the page of the data. So first name and surname are, are significant challenges. So it's very important for our data that they be as accurate as possible. The offence uh, category is one where um, we have the possibility both of an original transcription considering how it might be aided um, for other purposes. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, most of the other uh, terms we have available, um, uh, we simply transcribe uh, from the original record and we have an open search um, that enables people to establish whether you know, somebody uh, guilty offences in New South Wales in you know, 19, 10, should get some results from that, I think, yes. Um, so that's just how that search function works. Well, I might just draw attention to what lies behind this and that this is probably of more interest to a lot of people. Um, our first challenge was that we were dealing with um, a number of jurisdictions in which um, terms that we'd regard as, uh, you know, common to all of them might have been uh, represented differently in the original records. Um, and uh, the records in any case uh, vary in the extent to which they cover all aspects of the criminal uh, process. So, you know, Queensland and Victoria are particularly uh, rich data sets in terms of including earlier stages of the trial as well as later. Uh, but we had to uh, uh, develop a, uh, a, a process that would enable the researchers to define the different uh, registers, as we call them, different uh, state jurisdictions and the particular courts uh, at which, uh, which we were accessing data from, um, and have uh, an approach that would allow us to um, add attributes as they emerged over time and um, uh, to uh, have registers that had different numbers of attributes uh, and uh, at the same time respecting uh, the original data. We have, uh, so, so this is a typical example, maybe Queensland State a Supreme Court, we've got 67 attributes here. Um, some of these attributes will be shared between uh, different, uh, with other states and others not. Some of the data is available in original sources, others uh, is very inconsistent. Um, it's very important in this area, uh, looking at uh, Indigenous identity, for example, but uh, for the most part, these records don't contain that and that uh, tends to be derived from other reports such as news, historical newspapers, which can be searched through a, a trove API that we link to our records. Um, I'll just show you quickly how this looks in, in practice um, with, um, so again, examples from Queensland. So, um, so a key thing for us is verifying the data and the system uh, for most of our states 
enables us to check the data extracted against the original record. And uh, that's very important because uh, our data has been prepared both by researchers on the research team and as I mentioned by um, quite a large number of volunteers and this, this record itself has been entered by a volunteer just in the last day or two. Um, some are able to check um, the accuracy of this record. Uh, this is a pretty experienced uh, transcriber and I'd be expecting an uh, accurate um, representation of what's on the data page. Um, one of the key classification challenges for us is making sense of this um, offence here, breaking open a locked showcase and stealing therefrom, which is a very specific definition of an offence that if you looked at crime statistics, you wouldn't find a category for that. And so we've done quite a lot of work over the last couple of years, um, uh, coding our uh, offence data in particular to enable us to uh, visualise the records. So um, just get out of that one before. So back on the um, main page, people are able to visualise our records through this um, facility. And here, we, as I say, we've uh, run a code over One, one second, one second there, Mark. You, sorry, Mark, you, you just cut out for about a sentence there. If you could just, right. just that last sentence, please. Um, yes, yeah, so the visualisation uh, is a product of, of work we do on um, aggregating particularly our offence categories because this is obviously a key area of interest for people uh, looking at this in social science or historical terms. Um, we run a code over our offence data for whole jurisdictions over long periods of time and generate uh, levels of aggregation uh, through that code and um, the classifications are, are pretty familiar to people working in criminal um, uh, justice and um, anybody looking at uh, criminal statistics since the 19th century will recognise these are generally the kind of categories that are used and really uh, across uh, national borders now as well. Um, so there's um, a lot of work gone into the, to that and we have uh, both uh, meta level aggregates, so looking at homicide offences and property offences, personal offences, and then within those categories uh, looking at more uh, refined aggregations um, that still um, have their reference point in historical statistics or and now in, in contemporary criminal justice statistics of the kind you see on ABS. Um, the other areas are, are pretty much um, drawn direct from our data, although we do aggregate, again, the verdict uh, fields and uh, sentences particularly um, because there's some interest in considering uh, during this period when the death penalty was still in place, um, those uh, occurrences in which uh, the death penalty in fact was applied, particularly for the 19th century. Um, in the trial place and committal place, um, we just um, uh, use the original data there at the moment. We're involved in some mapping exercises at the moment where we're um, geocode basically got an ARC to look at a more detailed study of interpersonal violence over long periods of time using this um, database and extending it and we'll be very interested in uh, uh, geocoding crime events if we can get um, more specific information as we hope. So look, that's um, sort of what we're about and uh, as much as I, I think I can say at this point, I'm very happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mark. That's very, very interesting stuff.